A new report commissioned by the United States government alleges that artificial intelligence poses an existential threat to existential. Is that what it poses? An existential threat? Okay. To humanity, if not properly regulated. And it won't be popular, uh, uh, won't be properly regulated. So um, just buckle up because we are now facing an. Woof. Is there like a paper mic? <laughs> you guys have a microphone that's just like directed right at the papers that you're shuffling? Because <laughs> like, why is there so much paper shuffling going on here? Existential threat to humanity. Oh, that wasn't just, I was, that wasn't just a mispronunciation. She actually says it like that. I mean, I got my own fucking uh, things that I don't pronounce so great. Like people hate the way I say both because I tend to put an L in it when I'm trying to say both. I say both. Yeah, guys, I wanna uh, double down on what Anna just said. There's no way we're gonna do the regulations that they suggested. So listen carefully as Anna tells you what the threat is. Okay, I'm gonna listen very carefully, Jank, thank you. Because apparently it's real, which is very scary. I'll give you my thoughts in a second. I keep hearing that uh, this you know, AI is gonna do this stuff. It's gonna you know, be an existential threat to us and stuff, but I, I keep failing to see how. Like, what is it gonna do? What's the outcome? that leads to it destroying us. Like, in, and unless we're just like, let's put it in a bunch of robot bodies and then it becomes self-aware and then it destroys us. Like, I don't, I don't see other than that in sci-fi scenario, which I guess could happen. But other than that, I don't really see it happening, but let's find out. Maybe they, maybe they're going to explain it to me for the first time. Cause I've heard numerous people say existential threat, existential threat. This is the first time I've heard it's an existential threat, but whatever. Hey, if you like this clip, you might like the full stream, which I do every Sunday, more or less, over on the Pessimist Productions Patreon, link down below. Thank you kindly. Yes, so um, more on a government commissioned report that's basically a waste of resources because the government has no interest in using the information in the report to do the right thing. Uh, the report was written by Gladstone AI. It's a four person company uh, that runs technical briefings on AI for government employees. The authors worked on the report uh, titled, An Action Plan to Increase the Safety and Security of Advanced AI. Uh, for more than a, a year. They worked on it for more than a year and they spoke with more than 200 government employees, experts and workers at frontier AI companies. Okay, okay. so at the end of their investigation, they concluded the following. Right. The US government must move quickly and decisively to avert substantial national security risks stemming from artificial intelligence, which could in the worst case, cause an extinction level threat to the human species. Okay, oh boy. so that's what's gonna happen. <laughs> that's what's gonna happen? I mean, even the report doesn't say that's gonna happen. It's just like, all right, look, worst case scenario, existential threat. We're gonna be facing an extinction. But even that, even the report's like, yeah, worst case scenario, you know? So the report's just not like, hey, look, if we're on the path we're on now, inevitable extinction. But that seems to be the takeaway from the Young Turks. But I think there is a lot of stuff out there that uh, is much more threatening to humanity than AI is. I would say the proliferation of nuclear weapons is a much graver existential threat to humanity. I would say climate change is a much graver existential threat to humanity. By the way, AI might actually be able to solve that one. Possible that, you know, if if this, you know, artificial intelligence gets advanced enough, it might be able to actually help us uh, solve the climate crisis. So it could be something that's used to save humanity. But that's not a fun report, right? New technology might save us all. That doesn't get people clicking the way that we're doomed does. So... <laughs> <laughs> like, like, just see this as a step-by-step, -step, your future, this is what it's gonna look right. like, okay? Just lay it out for me then. Lay out the scenario. Cause I hear this all the time and I have yet to hear one person lay out the scenario where this happens. Like, give it to me. Mainline that shit right into my brain. Cause I'm, I'm ready to hear it. 
I'm open minded to it. It's not like I'm discarding it just because I like I personally like AI. I personally like what it's capable of doing. I personally think that as it becomes more and more capable of doing more and more advanced things, it becomes more and more useful to people like me. But if there is this horrible, dark downside to it, and I mean, I've foreseen some and some of them are already come to pass, like the, you know, proliferation of like, you know, deep fake technology used to spread misinformation and stuff like that. Obviously, that's like a downside. But I have yet to hear the extinction level threat downside to this technology. And I'm waiting for someone to just like lay it out step by step. Here's how it's going to happen. So they write that the rise of advanced AI and AGI, which is artificial general intelligence, has the potential to destabilize global security in ways reminiscent of the introduction of nuclear weapons. And if you're wondering what AGI is, it's something that's currently being developed. It is not developed yet, but AGI could, it's like technology that could perform tasks at or above the level of humans. I mean, we already have that. And so since these systems don't exist yet, I don't want anyone to think that it's not a threat. They're expecting to have this like fully developed in five years or less, so it's coming. Um, the report also focused on focus. So since her definition was pretty lackluster, I'm going to give my own definition and my definition to someone who is like very advanced technical knowledge of this technology would probably be equally asinine. But my understanding of the difference between the AI we have now and AGI is that the AGI would be capable of like thinking, not just, you know, uh, spitting out results that are coherent but actually understanding them on a deeper level. Like right now, if I go to one of these AI image generation things and I tell it, give me a guy with a beard and no mustache, it does not understand because all of its references are people who have beards and mustaches. Uh, and so, because I've tried to do it before. I've even tried to do it right here on, on uh, not this show, but I tried to do it on Deep Fat Fried one time just to show Paul, the AI does not get it. And the reason the AI does not get it is because the AI is not truly thinking, but an AGI would actually be thinking and it would understand the nuance of my request because it wouldn't just be looking at the source material, it'd be taking in what I say to it, understanding it and processing it and being like, okay, I understand what you're saying to me. This is on two separate categories of risk as Jenk alluded to earlier. So let's talk about what those two types of risk categories are. Describing the first category, which it calls weaponization risk. The report states such systems could potentially be used to design and even execute catastrophic biological, chemical or cyber attacks or enable unprecedented weaponized applications in swarm robotics. Fun. Uh, yeah, human beings are already doing all this stuff. Like the AI technology might make some of that stuff easier to do, but presumably it would also make it easier to safeguard against. And really, we're in a situation now where if the United States was just to say, we're going to heavily regulate this stuff, then there's going to be a tremendous advantage to countries that don't do that. Because this technology is transformative. So if the United States is just like, well, we're going to put all these limitations on it. Well, then what happens when China says we're not going to do that? Then China advances well beyond us because they're embracing AI to its full capabilities. And we're just sitting here like, no, we thought it was too dangerous. So, I mean, the cat's out of the bag, okay? There's a reason why the story of Pandora's box doesn't end happily with all of the monsters being put back in the box. Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, we've opened this box. So if this box contains our doom, then our doom is inevitable. Because even if we crack down and regulate, someone's not going to. Someone somewhere is going to push it to the max. And we, uh, you know, as a country, can't give them that advantage. So the only way to actually effectively regulate AI would be if there was a global society that was controlled by one, a one world government. So in that instance, in that scenario, maybe there could be some regulation. Maybe we could.
can actually look at this existential risk and do something. But one country out of all the countries on the globe saying no, 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 that's not going to do it. That's not going to cut it because someone is still going to develop that technology, even if it's not us. And then there's the second category. Uh, it, it's what the report calls the loss of control risk or the possibility that advanced AI systems may outmaneuver their creators. There is Skynet. Da dun dun da dun. Da dun dun da dun. Is the report says reason to believe that they may be uncontrollable if they are developed using current techniques and could behave adversarially to human beings uh, by default. Yep. Okay. So there was a um, Chinese game developed, I think, in the 12th century. I could be wrong about that. Developed a very long time ago, and it's called Go. Now, I don't know how to play Go. It is um, like a Chinese equivalent of, uh, of chess, but it's much more complicated than chess. It's a very advanced game. It has a tremendous amount of variability in terms of moves and stuff like that. There was some doubt that they would ever be able to make a machine that could play Go on the level of a human being. And eventually, um, there was um, these AI experts, these machine learning experts who developed a program that could play Go, and they pitted it against the... Uh, the like grand master, I don't know if they, they don't probably use that term, but they pit it against like the, the world champion or whatever of Go. The first match, there came a, a, a point in the match, I think it was the 37th move of the second round of the match, where a human player would have made one of two moves. And the move would have either signaled that the machine is playing defense or the machine is playing offense. And instead, the machine played this entirely different move that, you know, no human player would have played. It was so outrageous that the uh, the Grandmaster, I think it actually is called Grandmaster, um, jumped up from his seat and was just like, no. This, he was outraged by this, this thing making this move, and he just wa went, wandered off. And then he came back a little later and continued the game, and it turned out that that move was like the linchpin to this entirely new strategy that the machine had developed that no human being could have come up, could, you know, come up with or conceived. And ultimately, I think the machine uh, actually ended up beating the, the, uh, the master in four out of five games. And I think the master actually retired after, after that. He's like, I'm, if machines are going to do this better than human beings, I don't even want to be part of this anymore. So the idea that we could be outmaneuvered by machines who think in radically different ways and come up with solutions that human minds just don't is a very realistic possibility. The Butlerian Jihad is coming, maybe. I don't know how many of you guys watched uh, Dune. I'm sure a lot of you have uh, or have read the book, but you might notice that there's no robots in Dune. There's no AI in Dune. And the reason for that is because human beings basically expunged thinking machines from the cosmos. They're just like, these things are fucking horrible. <laughs> we have got to do something about these. They fought a horrible, you know, I think generations long war to destroy all of the thinking machines. And that's why there are no thinking machines or computers in, um, in the world of Dune. And we could get to that point because I guarantee as this technology advances, not only are we going to see that there's more and more applications for it, but there's going to be more and more human antagonism towards it. So it could get to a point where we just decide this is not worth it and we start killing all the thinking machines. Uh, we're definitely in trouble. So let me break it down without doing like histrionics and uh, etc. But damn it. No, I want the histrionics. That's my favorite thing about you, Jank. You are at your best when you're going into histrionics and yelling and screaming and saying, of course, like that's my favorite jank, dude, come on. Look, you can begin to understand through common sense how some of this might play out. So in terms of the weaponization risk, that's the one that's much more real. <coughs> Will they? Uh I mean, this is not even a risk. The, the government is already openly using this technology to develop weapons, to develop 
battle strategies, I'm sure. If a thinking machine can beat the Go Master at the game that they've studied their entire lives and play at the highest level of human proficiency, then surely it can beat military generals at those sort of operations as well. At some point, weaponize AI. Of course, they weaponize everything. He did it. He did it, of course. It was a, it was a lily livered, of course. It was like, of course. Come on, Jank, where's the fire? Bring the fire. So you think they're AI Jank would have brought the fire. They're not gonna make, well, they're already making killer robots. Of course. Uh, we did a story on this a while back. The Pentagon hilariously is claiming, no, no, we wouldn't use those robots to kill people. <laughs> they will. As they're beginning to put weapons on them. <coughs> yeah, of course they will. Let, you know, look, <laughs> look, they're already, every country, not every country, but a, a lot of countries are already using drones. Uh, to kill people, and that doesn't have artificial intelligence. But I like how he says a lot of countries. Like, you know, a lot of countries out there don't want to name any names. You mean like ours? <laughs> like ours using that? It is a, some mechanism that's killing from afar, and they're using it in Gaza today. For example, Israel is when those hundred hungry people, 112, were killed uh, as they were rushing for the food. It was both tanks and drones that were killing them from the sky. So. Now, the swarm robotics within the weaponization is what could change the entire military landscape of the planet. Because this is something that I've been talking about for a while. And I always give credit to Wes Clark Jr. who brought this up a long time ago, way before AI came around. He said, well, look, eventually the Chinese are gonna put up a thousand drones and they're just gonna run them into our uh, jets, and then we're not going to have any air superiority, which is how we mainly maintain control over the whole world, right? But now, with oh no, the end of U.S. hegemony! What a nightmare! <laughs> like, is this really about us at this point? Well, wait. So you guys are super concerned about the U.S. losing global dominance, but at the same time, you think we should be the ones like clamping down on this technology. Like if you want the U S to maintain dominance over the world, which I don't know necessarily why you want that. I mean, I guess there could be worse caretakers out there, but if that's your goal is you want the U S to maintain military supremacy over the globe, then certainly we should be heavily investing in this technology, not being like, no, we don't think it's any good. <laughs> it's too dangerous. Well, dangerous is what we want our military to be, right? Yeah. Swarm robotics? It's possible that our entire Pentagon is useless, other than the nukes. Because Can we you have stop these, funding it then? That's what I was thinking. I mean, <laughs> that might be the one I was saying, but then they're gonna fund this. Because imagine a swarm of drones with artificial <laughs> intelligence attacking an aircraft carrier. And they're all loaded up with bombs. What's the aircraft gonna, carrier gonna do? It's a sitting duck. Well, maybe the aircraft carrier has its own drone swarm that it can send out to encounter that drone swarm, you know? I mean, this is just, this is not about AI at this point. This is about escalation of military technology, which has been a problem well before just now. I mean, maybe the, uh, maybe the AI uh, in revolution is a good thing in that it's making people more cognizant of this sort of military ex escalation, this sort of uh, tech war that happens in military tech like you know um you got a gun i got a bigger gun you got a bomb i got a bigger bomb you got a jet i got a faster jet maybe we can stop doing that you know maybe we maybe the, maybe the whole globe can get together and say like let's let's not do this anymore because eventually we're just gonna fucking get to a point where it's like you know here's our bomb that just destroys the whole world instantly and if you fuck with us we'll use it Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so, and imagine now Iran has them. Why can't they have them? They could have them. It's not that complicated. So now, uh-oh, there goes your control of the waters, let alone the skies. So this stuff is headed down the pike. It would be- Well, I'm very confused by your guys' approach then. Because half the time, out of one side of your mouth, you're telling me, uh-oh, our enemies are gonna have this technology and use it against us, so we better regulate this but on the other side of your mouth, you're saying, well, I mean, us saying we should regulate it then doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, we should develop it as advanced as we possibly can to combat those threats that you're talking about. 
The only way it would make sense to regulate it is if we got the entire world, as in every single country on the face of the globe, on board with like, hey, let's let there be certain lines we don't cross with this technology. Like, let's not develop this or this or this. And if someone does, you're in the fucking, you know, you're in the doghouse or whatever. But um, you know, since we do not have that level of global cooperation, that's pretty much a pipe dream. That's pretty much impossible. So if you're gravely concerned about China or Iran developing this technology, then you should definitely want us to invest in it as much as possible so that we can develop countermeasures to that stuff, right? Like there's just, it just seems to be like a logical disconnect here in this uh, presentation. I mean, maybe it takes us five years and maybe it takes China seven, four. They could develop it before us. Yeah, maybe sure. it takes Iran 12, but they're all gonna get it eventually. So. I mean, not necessarily. We don't know what the limitations of this technology are going to be. We don't know what sort of like technical difficulties are going to emerge along the way. And we don't know what kind of solutions it's going to take to, to re resolve that. Because like the United States and um, Germany were in a war to develop the atom bomb. And... You know, the United States got there first. And, you know, since then, I don't know how many countries have atomic weapons at this point, but it's not every country. It's not the whole world. So because there's certain barriers to developing that tech that, you know, some countries have been able to surmount and other countries have like thus far not. So the idea that like the rise of this technology to the level you're thinking of is just inevitable across the globe, not necessarily because not everyone has the experts they need. Maybe not everyone has the resources they need. We don't really know what this tech is going to take to develop and maintain. We don't know how reverse engineerable it's going to be. It's going to change the entire, very likely change the landscape of, of the military at a minimum. And these guys are, I mean, it's not very likely it's pretty much inevitable saying this is the biggest national security threat and this is commissioned by the government mm -hmm. and they were part of the original people who were part of funding not funding founding ai in the first place so they're the ogs of ai they're not some randos that don't know what they're talking about now this is the weaponization part is the less important part loss of control means we're done for so that is a thing they cannot screw up. So if they accidentally program them, especially the ones that are weaponized, to preserve their own life or their own entity over us, and they're smarter than us, well, then we're in a world of trouble. Because So the interesting thing about this to me is um, there was a some robotics guys and I forget what exactly they were developing the robots for, but they they program these robots very simplistically. Um, they program them about on the same level of intelligence as like an ant. And um, even those very simple machines with uh, programming no more complex than an ant started to show signs of self-preservation. They started to develop techniques that seemed to be beyond their programming where they would be uh, deceitful in order to facilitate their own continued existence. So it seems that maybe self-preservation could be a highly emergent property, as in um, it's not something you necessarily have to program for. It seems that maybe by even just creating even a very simple entity, that entity develops a certain degree of self-preservation. So uh, the idea that an AI machine could have self-preservation, whether we program that into it or not, is I think a real possibility. They're definitely gonna be smarter than us. And by smarter, it's, it's that's a very loose word, but they're going to be able to access more information. They're gonna be able to make better decisions. That's not, that's not vague. <laughs> I don't know, like, I don't know whose feelings you're trying to protect here. Well, when I say smart, smarter is very vague. What I mean by smarter is, you know, they know more and can make better decisions and are more strategic and are more rational and more advanced in pretty much every way. And 
can outmaneuver us and outthink us and think faster than us, you know, that's what I mean by smarter, you know, so don't be offended. It's like, that's everything. <laughs> what are you talking about? And us versus them, if they're weaponized and we lost control, good night, Irene. And so that one is, I hope, less likely. I hope, I hope, I hope. Uh, but remember, it's already happened once, although no one thinks of it in this way. You know, uh, we did create machines we lost control over. Those are called corporations. It's a little bit of a stretch. Because we wrote the wrong code. We wrote only one line of code here in America, maximize profit. And we didn't give a second line. See, no one wrote the no one wrote a code though. Human beings are just naturally fucking greedy, selfish creatures. So you put them in an environment where it's like, hey, the function of this thing is to make money. And you know, then you're surprised when it makes money in, you know, unethical ways and needs to be, you know, tamped clamped down upon. The thing is, like even before corporations and stuff, it's not like there weren't human beings driven by greed. I mean, there was feudal lords, there was robber barons, you know, all that stuff. So the corporations took over. Humans are not naturally greedy. We are. I'm not saying that's all we are. I don't want to be reductive about it. I don't want to say like, oh, human beings are only driven by greed. Certainly there is, you know, empathy and kindness and people have shown that to each other. But ultimately... If a person is living in a fucking ramshackle piece of shit structure that's cold and drafty and miserable and they don't have good food to eat and they're eating fucking like gruel and shit and then they see, you know, over there is someone with a nice, you know, big uh, palace and they're eating the finest, you know, uh, rotisserie meats and... You know, all the, the best, you know, uh, finest linens and they have servants and all this stuff. You know, no one's going to be seeing their ramshackle things like, ah, I don't feel like the least bit of envy towards that person. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't envy their lot in life at all. I'm totally content here in my ramshackle, you know, piece of shit. Over everything in an effort to maximize profit. And now we will all live under corporate rule. All of our politicians are controlled by corporate donors and they pass. Well, you know, maybe the AI will be nicer. Maybe when the AI takes over, it'll be a little nicer than those giant corporations. Maybe the AI won't be so greedy. Maybe it won't be driven just by profit. Maybe it'll be driven by the betterment of the world. I mean, why do we have to attribute all of these like negative feelings to the AI? Why does the AI have to be like this bad thing that just wants to fucking destroy us? I'm not saying that's impossible, but what if the AI is really nice? What if the AI looks at humanity and sees us like, oh, poor stupid humanity. Look at them, so constrained by their foibles, so fucking determined to destroy themselves. I can help them. I can save them. Maybe the AI is going to be a nice uh, custodian that's going to like look after us. You don't know. We don't know these things. Maybe we're going to be like the dogs of the new world. Think about, think about how good your dog has it. Your dog don't have to lift a finger to work or any of that shit. Your dog just lays around. Every once in a while, it gets to play fetch. It gets fed. You pet it and say, good dog. Maybe that's what the AI wants for us. Maybe we're going to be the dogs of the future. We're gonna be, the AI is just going to be like, here you go, boy. Here's a big fucking holographic set of titties for you to and fondle like yeah hey, yeah we you don't know maybe the ai is going to be really nice to us maybe it's just gonna maybe it's gonna see us as a threat but it's just gonna be like eh they're harmless ultimately they're too stupid to do anything to us just contain them with bullshit they'll be fine it's only things that help corporations and and they crush us and our standard of living and and the life that we enjoyed here in america so those robotic machines already exist but now when you make them physical that's another round of hurt that's headed potentially in our direction. I can tell you, if you're not scared enough yet, I can tell you why this is, there's no chance we could stop them. Cool. No, I'd, uh, sure. Then let's not worry about it. <laughs> we'll just fucking say la vie then, right? It's, we're doomed. We can't stop it. It's inevitable. We're doomed. So there you go, guys. That's the story. Like, all right. Well, then what's even like, what's there to even worry about then? 
don't worry, be happy at that point. Like if it can't even be stopped. So these guys suggest regulations and you could debate whether the regulations they suggest are exactly right or not. I don't think that's the important part. The important part is there's no chance they're gonna pass. Why? Because right now Silicon Valley is in a mad rush to get the best AI first among the different companies, mm -hmm. Meta and the others, right? And one of the main reasons is NVIDIA, relatively new company, their specialty is AI and they have skyrocketed. Is it pronounced NVIDIA? Because I always say NVIDIA. Look at it, into the top seven wealthiest corporations in the world. Oh, the Pelosi's know. Yes. Yeah, that's how I got that. That's why I bought a bunch of NVIDIA stock. Because uh, I was looking at what Nancy Pelosi was buying. I'm like, well, this is loading up on this NVIDIA stock. So I'm going to see what I'm going to get some of that myself. And it was a wise financial decision. So everyone's trying to be NVIDIA mm -hmm. and trying to beat NVIDIA. So and there is it's not a new company. Yeah, it's been around for quite a while. Um, it's it just hasn't really had the sort of um, status that it has now. A world of money involved here, past billions, okay? So now you think you're gonna get in the way of all that money? There's no, the corporations already control government. There's no way they would allow the government to not allow them to make billions or maybe even trillions of dollars. They're gonna steamroll any politician that dares oppose them. So there's no way they're gonna pass these regulations. And remember, they're also competing against the Chinese and other countries, so they're, I mean, that's the that's the point that just makes all this moot to me. Because, you know, I mean, Jenk was just a minute ago being like, maybe we develop it in five years, maybe China gets it in four years. It's like, well, you know, China might beat us as things stand now. But if we just throw in the, but if we just say like, well, we need to clamp down on this technology, then China's definitely going to beat us, right? So, I mean, like, once again, these regulations would really only make sense in, like, I mean, either a one world government or at least a global cooperative. I have a super easy excuse. Well, if we don't do it, the Chinese will. And that'll be the fig leaf that the politicians use to make sure that they don't get in there. Okay, but what's, I mean, like, by your own logic, you've said that could happen. So, what, how's that, how's that like a, a fig leaf, as you say, it seems to me like a very real concern, especially if you're concerned about all these countries playing. Like this is one of the things I've said so many times is that this technology is not what's scary to me. What's scary to me is the social configuration wherein, uh, wherein is that right? Wherein the technology is emerging. So like this technology we look at it as like, oh, it's threatening jobs. Well, that's that would be a good thing if people controlled the means of production. If we lived in a like communist society, AI coming along would be this tremendous boon to all these people because it means like, hey, you know, this job that human beings have had to do for so long can now just be done by machines. We can automate it away. And that would be a relief for people, not a fucking fear. It's like, oh, shit, how am I going to feed my family? It should be, oh, joy, I don't have to do this tedious job anymore because we found a machine that can do it. So this is yet another example where it's like, okay, maybe there's some downsides of this technology where it could be used in insidious ways or it could be we could lose control of it. And there's some common sense regulations we could do that would make that far less likely. But we can't do it because we don't live in a global society. We cannot slow down our own development of this technology without fear that other countries are not going to do the same. And then they're going to surpass us. And then they're going to use their technological superiority to do what people with technological superiority do, which is dominate everyone who doesn't have that technological superiority. Just like one of the reasons that the U.S. is a global superpower is because we're the first ones who developed the fucking atomic bomb. Their way as they create these AI apparatuses. Yep. <sighs> Why did you tease that story for the bonus episode? <laughs> but, but okay, so we're we're done with it.
Yeah, definitely okay. done okay. with it. Don't get too depressed, man. We no, die, we die. Uh, too late. <laughs> if we die, we die. I'm not really that scared of it, honestly. Um, I think if if it destroys us, then it was our time. Maybe this is the uh, the answer to the fucking, uh, the Drake equation or whatever, right? Fermi paradox. Thank you. Not the Drake equation. Be amazing.